phase two, day two. Of course, day one was legs. Now on to day two, which is gonna be back and biceps. The pairing phase, so we're pairing up two pulling motions, back and biceps together. And uh, legs are feeling a little bit of tight, so as you can see, we're doing some, uh, some mobility stuff, kind of getting some uh, lateral squats, some stretching, some leg swings. And we're gonna start off this back workout with some deadlifts, so we'll see how we feel. Get uh, this first set done, 10 reps. Start with like 225, see how it feels. So as you can see, we're jumping up pretty quick on the weight. Uh, a couple reasons being, one, don't want to burn out too much on the lighter weight. Uh, this phase is a little bit lower in the rep range, so starting with 10 reps, kind of more of a warm-up feel out, and then it gets as low as four reps. So the goal is to get really heavy with these deadlifts here. So we went from 225 more, kind of a feel out, getting those 10 reps in. We're going to jump up to 315, get eight reps, and then progress through there. Going up in weight, and then we'll drop those reps down as we progress. We were uh, very careful. We started off with some mobility, especially on something as large as deadlift. Real compound exercise, which is working so many different joints and muscle groups in the body. So you just want to, you know, better safe than sorry. And uh, yeah, not feeling too bad. We're taking about 90 second rest times. As we said before, 30 to 60. Isolation, 60 to 90 with compound. And as you can tell from my voice, I need every second of those 90 seconds. Whew. Really trying to build strength. And this exercise in particular, like Hudson was saying, it's involving a lot of muscles, a lot of joints. So to get really strong in an exercise like this, deadlifts, squat, you know, that's really gonna build that nice, good foundation, that thick muscle mass and strength. And it can carry over to a lot of different things, not only in your life, but in other lifts as well. So to get something like this, you really wanna have your goal, and this is why we put it kind of a priority in the program, going really heavy, putting it first uh, for like, let's say back day, so that way you can get it, all the effort into it. You're starting fresh, at least somewhat fresh, because you did, like I say, a little tight. But other than that, really kind of just right off the bat and get really heavy, as heavy as you can. I already feel like working up a sweat. That's how great these are. We're in a lot of calories. We have a lot of those muscles. So even if, let's say, you're not interested in building a lot of strength or size, this is a great tool and exercise to burn a lot of calories because it's involving so much muscle and involving so much energy. You'll see that we change up to over under on the heavier set here. We were doing over over, uh, double over on most of the uh, most of the first sets there when it's not too heavy. You know, we really want to try to get double over and work on that grip strength, work on that bar control for as long as you can. But once it gets heavier and heavier, that bar is going to want to roll out of your grip. So that's when you do the over under because it helps with that bar roll. So that way you can concentrate more on the lift and less on your grip. not too bad as you can see went down a little bit of weight as opposed to Brandon because hey safety first so I wasn't feeling like I wasn't feeling like I could exactly get four full reps so I went down just a little bit and I think we're gonna go ahead just for shits and gigs go up to 500 pounds just to give it a rep. you know you gotta have fun it doesn't say to do this in the plan but we're feeling pretty good so we're gonna give it a shot Lightheaded. Oh, 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 oh yeah. We did it though, that's the important part. Yeah. And don't be afraid of failing too. Like so let's say you load up an extra amount of weight that you're not used to and you're just feeling good and you want to try it out. You know, me and Hudson have done this weight before. 
but sometimes when you're doing four sets, you're like, oh, I don't know if I can take it, but you know what? I'm feeling good, so might as well do it. But if you fail, if you fail while doing it, it's not a bad thing. It's just you're constantly trying to push the envelope. You know, you're constantly trying to push it that much further and, and reach new, reach new, uh, new heights. So, uh, so yeah, if you put some extra weight on, weight on, and you end up failing. It's okay. It's fine to fail. You know, as long as you just keep it up, and eventually you will succeed. Moving on to bend over rows. It's gonna be four sets of eight reps. So immediately going on to a little bit of the heavier weight. This is gonna stress a lot of that lower back, the rectus spinae muscles that really stabilize the spines because you gotta keep that bent over position here. So it's constantly getting contracted there to help, to help stabilize and keep that straight spine throughout. So we already worked deadlifts, which is gonna be a, a big lower back exercise. So you just wanna be careful doing this one right off the bat because you don't wanna pull any muscles in there because it's gonna be extra tight due to just performing deadlifts. So, that's when you gotta, that's when feel out sets come into play. So if you're not too, if you're not too aware, if you don't really know your weight as far as certain exercises go, take it slow, always take it lighter and then work up from there and then start counting your working sets after you get to a certain weight that's comfortable for the, the uh, rep range, which the rep range will be eight reps on this one. What's next? Pull ups. V grip, v grip pull ups. Oh, yeah. Pull ups oh. or pull downs? Pull ups. All right. V grip, huh? Not not really v grip, grip pull ups. Four sets, eight reps. Probably use this one right here. All right, moving on to V grip pull ups. What you can do is if you just have a bar, a V grip bar, you can wrap it around and get the actual V grip. But we're just going just gonna to simulate it well enough. They already got the attachment here. So it's essentially like a closer grip. Palms are gonna be facing each other, so your elbows are gonna be running a little bit tighter to your body. This is really gonna feel a lot of that on your lats, specifically your lats, not necessarily too much in the upper back like you would in a wide, a wide uh, overhand pull-up. So uh, it's gonna be four sets of eight reps. Reps are a little bit lower, so we're gonna add some weight to it. And in weight, I mean chains. Chains. Bring on the chains. <laughs> I am christened. Yes. Time for a chain upgrade. It's just ain't enough. We're all about the jewelry. We're all about looking good, you know. Bling. Yeah, you know. Up to bling. Roll into the club, bottle service. What are they gonna do? You gotta get a howl, <laughs> like rampage. Exactly. We got the rampage Jackson chain painted on right now. Dumbbell pullovers, cross bench. Really only work in that shoulder joint, this one, so it's really isolating or helping to isolate the lats that way. You're gonna get a full stretch. You're gonna feel it in your core, your abs. Feel, feel it in your stratus anterior, your lats. A little bit in your tricep, the stretch in your tricep. What you wanna really key in on is keeping your hips lower. So if you let your hips extend too much and get above your, your torso, it's relieving a lot of that stretch 
in the lats and the, all the other muscles, triceps, shoulders. So keep your hips lower, take a nice deep, deep breath as you bring it back, feel that stretch and then pull it up and over to that top position that's located right above you and that's when you exhale. So this is an excellent exercise to really get a lot of that oxygen in and, uh, and feel that nice deep stretch in those lats. So this is the second phase. As you know, each phase lasts three weeks. So while doing this phase, you're gonna be weeks four through six. The intensity is getting up. Me and Brandon all, both already really feel it, as Brandon said, it's the pairing phase. So we're putting you know, two muscles that either pull together or push together. Uh, today would be pull, which is back and biceps. And it's taking it out of us, it really is. But at the same time, we're feeling great. You know, as you can see, I'm sweaty. No, I don't have someone with the uh, spray bottle in between, in between takes doing this. I'm, I'm definitely feeling it, but I feel great. We're just getting uh, stronger and stronger. What me and Brandon both notice is really, this being the third year we've done a 12 week plan, it's really starting, you know, take those progress picks. We highly recommend that. It takes those first, you know, at least for us anyways, that first three to six weeks to get really into it. And then by week seven, is when we really start noticing it, at least us anyways. You look at that new updated progress picture, seven to nine weeks in during phase three, and that's really where we both went, hey, you know what? This shit's paying off. I'm starting to look really good. We're starting to feel really good, and then by the time we get into phase three, you know, hopefully we begin to look good, which I really do feel that we will. We got our eating in check, we got the workouts, and we got the rest. The three things we recommend you do as well, along with consistency. We really try to focus on getting short rest times this is going to increase your calorie burn throughout the, the workout because it keeps your heart rate elevated so if one of your goals is to get pretty shredded pretty ripped decrease the body fat percentages and you're not a huge fan of cardio honestly i haven't been doing cardio for the last three months or so because i really want to try to get most of my calorie burning and muscle involvement all in one all in one workout so that way i don't have to worry about jumping on the treadmill for 30 minutes just walking uh, every once in a while, obviously it is good to get your cardio in, but don't feel like you have to. Just shorten your rest times during the, the workout, keep your heart rate elevated, and then of course, like Hudson was saying, watch what you're eating, get the proper rest, and uh, everything else will fall into place. That can be one of the most <laughs> challenging things when you're all done with this fucker, is just getting it back up safely, so, uh, damn. Shrugs, excellent isolation exercise for those traps. Pretty simple exercise, relatively short range of motion. Elevating that scapula, those shoulders upwards, getting that full contraction, nice squeeze, and then bring it down to the bottom position. What you want to avoid is to roll it. A lot of guys rolling it back, which is pretty popular back in more than the 90s, early 2000s. You see a lot of bodybuilders doing it that way. Really, any, anyone that really kind of started doing shrugs, but it's a better way to really just kind of keep that straight upward motion, that elevation, get that full contraction, slight hold the top, and then let it down to the bottom position. You might be able to tell we're slowing down a little bit. <laughs> we, we, we maybe lost a little bit of a spring in our step from the beginning of this video. But hey, keep it like a slasher from the 80s, man. Michael Myers, Jason Voorhees, you're slow, but you just keep coming. Those weights are running from you. Dumbbells are running that way. You know, the plates are rolling that way, but you find them. You hunt them down, you find them, and you lift those some bitches. Isn't that right? Yeah. I'm the ripper, the slasher, the terror. I am buff dude. Really feel that nice deep burn, deep, deep burn in those, those biceps. Far down in there, get that lactic acid building up. Really isolating the biceps on this one, taking the, the shoulder out of the equation here. When you bring that up, bring as far as you can up without shrugging up. Really try to keep the, the shoulders down and depressed as you bring those elbows back. And at that top position, you want to squeeze and flex, and you really, really feel it. Also, you want to get a little bit of a wider grip on this one. 
if you get too close, it's going to be hard to get that range of motion. So get a little bit wider shoulder width, or possibly a slightly wider than the shoulder. That way you can get a better range of motion in there. This is one you might want to tuck that tank top into the pants as well, you know. Unless you want to give someone a show on every single time you're doing it, because along with dragging your arms, you're going to be dragging that t-shirt right up. Unless that's your subtle way of, you know, finding somebody in the gym you want to hit on, you know. Look what I got. Yeah. Don't, don't do that. <laughs> I'm just showing my six back. I didn't mean to do that. Does it work a little bit of your back as well? It does, it works the back. So what you'll notice is you're, you're pulling your traps back. So you're slightly getting a retraction in there. Uh, just as long as you're not shrug it, shrugging it up, as we were saying before, try to keep your, your uh, shoulders depressed or your scapula depressed down, but you're gonna be squeezing it back slightly to kind of keep a nice stable shoulder joint in there. If it's too forward, you won't be able to get that range of motion as you bring it up. So externally rotate your shoulders here this way you'll get a farther range of motion. Try not to keep them pronated, because what's happening is gonna limit your range of motion, so really squeeze them and retract them, but just make sure they're depressed as well. So there is gonna be a lot of tension held in the upper back and the traps, but uh, you're not necessarily worried about the traps so much when you're performing this. You're really gonna be feeling the biceps, at least you should be. Oh, yeah, there we go. I'm passing it on. Yeah. Do as much as you can, as long as you're taking it, pushing to the limit. That's Hudson's inner monologue, right? Do you really want me to sing that again? Hell yeah. Because I mean, I'm ready to at any time, but I was just making sure. You don't? Okay, fine, I'll do it anyways. Push it to the limit. Rise above the burning flame. All right, rest time's over. Let's get this started. I still got it going in my head, though. One is gonna call for another inner montage song. You're gonna win it, yeah! Yeah! Next up, this is gonna be the last exercise we're doing. Again, we're isolating the biceps, finishing off this workout, and uh, it's gonna be the incline dumbbell curls. It's gonna be a bilateral, meaning at the same time. And uh, we're gonna add some supination in there. So start more of a neutral grip, and as you curl up, you're gonna be supinating. Really kind of twisting in, getting that pinky towards that shoulder joint, getting a nice contraction right there in the bicep. Of course, uh, elbow flexion is going to be one of the main motions of the bicep. Also, supination is a major uh, movement as well. So supinating is really going to involve extra amount of uh, stress in the bicep there. So what you want to remember in these ones is keep your elbows back. So try to keep them in that vertical, vertical plane there and just use that elbow flexion and supination in there. So what you don't want is bringing the elbows up. As it gets more difficult, the last few reps, you might have to cheat it up a bit, but as long as it's a controlled cheat rep, as long as you're really controlling it, just using a bit of that shoulder flexion is fine. As long as you keep it nice controlled, good fluid tempo. I think I pushed it to my limit. <laughs> the song just stopped. It was right in the middle of it and it just went <laughs> So yeah, I pushed it to my limit on that one. I can measure the workout by how fluffy my hair gets. So the more pump I get, the more bigger my hair gets, more blood flow, you know. It just keeps getting bigger and bigger. So I think I've had a pretty good workout. He's not quite he's not quite to a racer head levels yet, so I think we can push him harder in phase one. Yeah. We'll see how tall it gets, how much volume is in there. Time's good to check the pump, check the progress. It's not being vain. It's like a, it's like a sprinter. They have stopwatches to make sure they're progressing. Both dudes have a mirror.
in a single bicep salute. I'm being great. Okay, that's just between me and you. <laughs> You're not supposed to say that. Oh shit. We are very big. <laughs> oh shit, here we go. The last one, man. I knew I had to finish up with 12. Fuck it. This is it, the last set. I'm starting to now have the inner monologue push the limit. Shit, it works pretty well. Don't think we're weird. By the time you're done with this, you're gonna be this delirious too. Shit. Let's go. That's it. This workout is over. Phase two, day two is in the books. You have to be a little bit of a maniac. Put this kind of stress on your body, but in the long run, goddamn, it feels good when you complete it. So, like Hudson just said, day two is over. Hell yeah, we'll see you. Phase two, day three. You're gonna be hitting chest. Oh yeah. Till next time. Stay buff. Yeah.